Domestics are some of the most volatile and dangerous calls that law enforcement officers go on. Thank you for joining us for today's Active Self Protection Bonus Badge Cam Lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Las Vegas, Nevada. Today's video is brought to you thanks to Magtech Ammunition, the official ammunition supplier for all range activities of active self-protection. To get the context here, you can go watch the brief from Las Vegas Metro PD. Uh, officers have responded to an open 911 line. That means somebody called 911 and then there was nobody there. And so they responded to the house of a guy that they were called to the night before uh, where they had a man who had a mental health crisis and uh, ended up transporting him to the hospital for evaluation that night. And then what they hear on the 911 call is the man screaming at his parents. It's his parents and him and his wife apparently who live in this house uh, and threatening them to kill them and anyone else who shows up. That's where we have here not only the helicopter but badge cam. Let's listen in. Give us a red. Copy code red. Rosalba. We're returning. We're turning back to our vehicles. Uh, well, I got the male half. Not the subject, but the female half still not uh, responding yet. I don't have her in sight anymore. Repair 3K9, please. See the lady in the pink robe. That's my cold red. Come on. They got it probed out. He came out with a shotgun in his right hand, and then a handgun in his left hand. He wouldn't drop it. Other thing else is, uh, our subject has a shotgun in his possession. Ma'am, come outside. No, 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 no. One. Give us a red. Sir, Sir get back with him. Me. Come out with your hands up. Go. I've got no cover. Go. Sir, come out with your hands up. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Shots fired, shots fired. Sir, come out with your hands up. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Shots fired, shots fired. Officers took this man into custody. He ended up in the hospital in serious but stable condition. He's facing a host of charges. No one else was harmed and that's where this one ends. Man, split second, thank God she had the skills to protect herself. If you want to get better with your handgun skills, come and join us when we tour the country on the Cover Your Ask Tour. We will be in your area before long. Hit the link in the description. I promise whether you're a law enforcement officer or a private citizen, we will help you get better with your handgun. Let's think about lessons. Friends, this is the chaos of a real life DV call as these officers show up here again to an open line with a guy threatening people and his father comes out. And again, if you go watch the brief from LVMPD or read the news stories, the officer comes out here and says his son is threatening people and he's armed with a shotgun and a pistol. The shotgun was legally owned by the father. The pistol, they said they don't know where he came from and I wasn't able to find uh, whether or not they traced that back to a legal source or not. But these officers, you can see the officer down here, he's got a gun in his hand and he has to, you know, suss out what's going on here. So thankfully he's gonna pull this father away and then start trying to figure out how do we get everybody out? Cause we've got basically a hostage situation brewing here. Now we can see the officer who's badge cam that we're gonna end up seeing and see the situation that she ends up in here, that this is a corner home and so she's trying to find a vantage point in order to see inside, but at the same time, she doesn't really have the ability to continue to go to the top of the screen for us to continue to back up because there's a block wall there. She has other officers on scene as well, and that's when we hear her complaining about, I got no cover and I got nowhere to go. Well, that's why, and she has to be able to see into the house. So from a tactical perspective, she's in a bad spot here. The guy's gonna have every advantage, and so she's gotta be able to, to handle that problem if it becomes a shooting problem 
which it did, and try to get in there and solve the problem before that as well. But of course, very, very serious issue here. Now, I do like the fact that you notice that as she's trying to find an angle that she doesn't cut in and hug that doorway. Instead, she works around it and works out and away from it to give herself a little bit more space. Generally speaking, when you're working angles, the farther away you can get, the better angle that you'll give yourself from a tactical perspective in order to cause that problem, as long as you have the handgun skills to solve that problem. And she did have enough handgun skills to solve that problem in the moment. So uh, recognize here that we can see the guy come out of the house and, and we're seeing him and her interacting and seeing the problems that they're having there. Uh, and seeing her end up getting shots on the guy. And then you know, we're gonna go to the badge cam now to really see what happened in that instance. But clearly very quick situation. Now she's coming up to the door. One thing I wanna notice here is that she has the doorway closed and it appears darkened on the inside. Very difficult. Notice as well that she does have a light mounted on her pistol. I can't tell you enough. A pistol mounted light, very good thing for a police officer to have because you gotta be able to defeat these kind of photonic barriers and very difficult to do. So a flashlight, not only with good lumens, but great candela is very important here. And brighter is better in these kinds of situations for sure. There cannot be too bright here unless it sets things on fire or has recoil. Now notice here as well, she's trying to get something with her right hand, but she transfers that gun into her left hand. I would strongly recommend that you do as little transferring as possible between your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand if you have to shoot. Most people do not do hardly any shooting with their non-dominant hand. And because of that, I mean, if she had to defend herself in this instance, that would have been very, very difficult. So set your gear up, everybody, such that you can get to all of your gear that you possibly can with your non-dominant hand. So if you have to take a hand off the gun, it's your non-dominant hand because she's gonna transfer the gun back to her right hand here, get two hands on the gun, that's a good thing. And then she's gonna end up transferring back a couple times in those things. Couple things I do wanna say on that, notice here that she's making some uh, good suggestions here. She's using good uh, physical gestures that she's trying to get the lady to come out. Come on out of here, ma'am, so that we don't have a hostage situation. That's a good thing. I also think that we see officers here with nitrile gloves on, and I would suggest for my officers that they get some training and they work some with the nitrile gloves on and shoot some with nitrile gloves on. It does feel a little different. So having some experience before you're in an actual gunfight with that really good thing. Notice as well, she's got a talk here with the gun in hand. And so again, thinking with a gun in the hand, incredibly important, seeing what's going on, incredibly important. And this is why we want the marksmanship skills to just be utterly unconscious competence. We want those to be completely foolproof without a question because there's so much else going on. Your cognitive load will be very, very high. And so you wanna not have to think about, am I gripping the gun correctly? Am I seeing the sights correctly? Am I pressing the trigger correctly? You wanna just have all that to, there because she's gotta deal with dad here. She has another officer who's off in the distance who she's having to communicate with. She's having to see what is potentially a deadly threat and she's having to signal all that and maintain control of the scene. She's a senior officer president. She is a sergeant, so she's having to control what's going on here. That cognitive load, very, very high. And we must recognize that our officers get in this kind of situation all the time in DV situations like this that are turning into you know, an armed suspect call. Now then, she transfers the gun again to be able to wave things around with her dominant hand. Don't recommend that. And also notice that in order to do that, she left that gun in a very poor grip. Thankfully, she didn't have to shoot, so it ended up being okay. But that's why I don't recommend transferring the gun like that. Leave the gun in your dominant hand and signal whatever you need with your non-dominant hand. Thankfully, she gets her hands back on the gun, and now we're gonna have to see what happens as this guy comes up. She's trying to get over and away and see something, but she just has a really bad angle. And, and sometimes you're just in that kind of sandwich, and you gotta just figure it out and do the best you can with what you have. And your best cover is having superiority with your skills. Notice again, she's got two hands on the gun. She also has that gun below her line of sight. So this is kind of a variation on a low ready position where she's taking the gun, it's still pointed towards uh, the doorway and lowered it from her sight so she can see better. I would recommend use the low ready position. Again, uh, you know, drop that muzzle so that it's not pointed at you don't know what when it's the mother or something like that. Instead of kind of using this, this high ready that is a high depressed ready, I really recommend a low ready position as a useful tool for law enforcement officers and private citizens. Now, Dude comes out here and we can see the fact that he has a gun in his hand, in his left hand right now, and he has a shotgun in his right hand. And what we're going to be able to see as he comes out is as the officer continues to strafe, 
she uses that spot and you can see right now the shotgun in his hand. So he has a shotgun in his right hand, a pistol in his left hand, and neither of those are just down at the side. He is actually starting to bring those up. So the officer continuing to move and moving in a spot where she can see better is critical here. So sometimes standing still is the best answer because you can get the best shooting position, but you got to get where you can see because you can only shoot where you can positively identify. You're going to be able to see what those threats are. And she did a pretty go darn good job of that, of moving herself to a good position that she could see what's going on. Now then, is it reasonable to assume a deadly threat here that a guy comes out the door after all these attempts by police in order to say, hey, we need you to drop the gun and those kinds of things when he comes out the door knowing there are cops out there with multiple guns? Of course, the answer to that is yes, that, that any reasonable person would not do that. But of course, this guy's not reasonable. He puts the officer in the position where she has to defend herself and it's reasonable for her to do so, even though it's terrible in having a mental health crisis for him to do that. Now you can see right here, he raised the, the shotgun. There's just no question about that. He raises the shotgun at her in this moment and that makes him beyond a reasonable deadly threat. That is, she gave him more than every opportunity. In fact, if he had you know, really wanted to get ahead of her and he could have just raised that and fired before she could possibly have responded in time. But trying to give him every opportunity here, she did try to give him every opportunity and in that space, she then fires a shot. So again, she's a little farther here than we would normally say. So she starts firing pretty quickly, but she's beyond seven yards. And notice here that her second shot breaks when the muzzle is still depressed. So she's, she's really scared here and I don't blame her for being really scared here. I will say to my officer friends and my private citizen friends, make sure that you are shooting as fast as your sights allow, not just pressing the trigger as fast as you can, because the only thing worse than a miss is a slow miss, but a miss is bad. And so you wanna get hits with every shot, and that means you gotta see your sights, and the sights determine how fast you can shoot, not your trigger. So then she does get the gun back up for the third one. So the second one went off so fast, it definitely went down and onto the concrete. But the third one, she got up and got the sights again. So again, first one was probably on target, could have been low, hard to say, but that second one went crazy. Third one went to a good spot. So again, grip is the master, sight set the pace, and trigger is the servant. Use that mantra to help you in your handgun training so you use it in your deadly force encounter. Now then, again, see this next one going off. She's shooting very quick, and we can still see the guy is still standing, though he is starting to turn. Though she's not gonna be able to make that determination in the moment that quickly, she gets a fourth and a fifth shot off. So at these kind of distances, she is approximately 20 to 25 feet away. So she's in that seven to eight yard range. You wanna have your handgun skills very strong. Notice as well, you know, again, as it ends here, as the, the uh, camera angles are going and they stopped uh, with the, what they released, recognize that when she was able to get to concealment, she stopped shooting. And that was reasonable because then the guy dropped his gun or at least dropped what was there. So recognize here that that bush is just concealment. It's not cover, but it worked just as well as cover for her in that moment. And we see that in law enforcement and private citizen shootings all the time, that concealment ain't cover, but it works about the same 99% of the time. It's very unfortunate that the officers were put in this situation. I want you all to know that I have great heart for those who have mental health crises and want to do the very, very best we can. But this is why we send police officers and not social workers to these kinds of DV calls, because they can erupt in this kind of violence and they very often do. This officer did a very good job of protecting everyone else in the home, protecting herself. Thankfully, they got this guy to the help that he needed. This officer protected her community and covered her ass.